please join me in welcoming back to, Indi to the state of Indiana, the 1988 Miss Basketball and the next leader of our women's basketball program, head coach Vicki Hall. It's been a busy week for the Indiana State Women's Basketball Program. Welcome in the eighth head coach in program history in Vicki Hall. Vicki joins us here on GoSycamores.com to talk about now being the Sycamore head coach. Coach Hall, I know I've been one of many, but welcome to Terre Haute. It's great to have you here. And for you being an Indiana gal, how much more special is it to just be back in this state and ultimately being able to coach in this state as a head coach? It's, it's phenomenal. I can't even really put it into words how exciting it is for me to finally be back home. Uh, from Since 1988, I've been traveling the world and doing different things, and now finally I get to be back in the state of Indiana um, where basketball is king and it's so exciting. So I just I couldn't be happier. You brought that up in the press conference yesterday of basketball means so much in this state and you know that being Miss Basketball in this state and being the National Player of the Year of course not just Miss Basketball in the state of Indiana but in the country as National Player of the Year why is it that basketball is so special in this state and why this was a job that really stood out to you because of that reason well I think it's just because of the history um, you know, from from all the different programs. I mean, you have Indiana State with Larry Bird. I mean, you have, you know, IU in the days of Bobby Knight and even after that. You have Purdue, G you know, Gene Cady and, and what they're doing now, Matt Painter. I mean, Notre Dame, I mean, do I have to go on? I mean, it's just, it's amazing what's been done. John Wooden is from here. If you ever have time, you know, go to the Hall of Fame and you can see what that truly means. Let's get to this job. What stood out just about this job? I know your relationship with Sherrard, of course, knowing him way back when, when you guys were playing kickball with each other, as he, <laughs> as he mentioned uh, the press conference yesterday. But just this job, because this was a place, as you brought up yesterday, that was really rocking and rolling in the 2000s with players such as Melanie Baglin, and that list goes on and on. Definitely. Not. That's a huge reason why it was so appealing to me is because there's tradition here. It can be done. It's not like going to a place where it's never been done before and you have to reinvent the wheel. Um, here, you just have to get the, 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 the tires oiled up again and moving. And so, you know, that's going to be the goal. You played in this state, as I mentioned. What's the key to keeping some of that in-state talent in? You ended up going to Texas and having a stellar career, one of the best players in the country. You were able to go to a really big-time program. It would be great to try to get Miss Basketballs to come here to Indiana State and really get this program built up and go. I think you have that special connection because you know what it's like playing in this state, growing up in this state. What will it take for, for Indiana State to keep some of that in-state talent in and want to come here and play? Well, you know, I think one of the, the great things that – that we will bring here as far as our staff is we will be able to develop people and I don't think everybody does a great job of that and you know we know what it takes to be a pro I've done that how many people truly know that we know what it means to play at the highest level so not everybody can bring that all the time when they're recruiting somebody where they can actually say, well, you know what, um, you want to be in the WNBA or you want to go play overseas. Well, I actually did that for 16 years. And so, you know, I kind of know what it means and what you need to do. And I can help you. I can help you try to get there. Some may think it's difficult for mid-majors to make some noise. You're coming from the Mid-American Conference, which right now is really having a banner postseason with Central Michigan and Buffalo making the Sweet 16. On the men's side, we see the Valley team in Loyola right now oh, in the yeah. Sweet 16 and continuing to have a chance to advance. Despite maybe having those limitations from budget reasons to the big-time programs, why can this be a time where mid-majors are showing that they can make some noise and they can be successful on the biggest stages? Well, I think right now there's just a lot of parity in basketball in men's and women's. Um, you know, it, a lot, and it has a lot to do with what I said before, development. Uh, the mid-majors, you're going to get players that need to develop, and, but you have to be good at that. And so you can see the different programs that are actually being successful in that, and I think that's a huge reason why they're competitive in beating teams like Virginia, North Carolina, uh, LSU, you know, Ohio State, and so on. Just celebrated 25 years of women's sports in the Missouri Valley Conference this past week or a couple weeks ago in Moline at the conference tournament. 
The Valley was a two-bid league a year ago and had success. What just do you know about this league and kind of the basketball history and why that also intrigues you to jump in with the Drakes, the UNI, the Missouri States, which you just say the name Jackie Styles. I think everybody knows about that history and what this league has been able to accomplish. Yeah, I played against Jackie, actually. You know, what a phenomenal player, you know, right here in the Valley. <laughs> you know, Illinois State had, had phenomenal seasons. I, there's just a lot of tradition within the Valley. And it's, I mean, I think it's great when recruiting. There, You can talk about what the tradition was and what does that mean. And there are different players that have been successful that have gone on and played pro from this conference. So it's doable. I know right now you're going through and meeting with the players and really kind of looking through your roster and see what you have coming back and what you'll have. You're busy putting a staff together. I was joking with you as you were coming in. I'm sure it's not going to be a slow down <laughs> period at all. It's going to be fast forward. But knowing this is a program that is trying to win a postseason game for the first time in five years, it's been five years since winning a game in the month of March. You and I, Missouri State, those are two programs that, of course, respect so much in this league. Haven't had a chance to knock them off in that same time frame. What's the biggest thing for Indiana State moving forward that you're in charge that you think that can start to turn that tide and get this program back into the upper tier? We need to change the culture. We need to get back to the basics. We need to get, like I said in the press conference, we will be gritty. We will outwork people. We will defend. Those kind of things, we're going to come to the party. We're not going to wait for people to come to us. And I think that that will, will We'll just start to change things just just in our look when we're on the court and what we do when we're playing For right away. I don't know necessarily right away will that change the win and loss column, but I think I can guarantee you that it will look different. This may be the hardest question you've been asked in your plethora of interviews the past two days. Uh -oh. When you did play kickball with Sherrard, <laughs> how many times did you get him out? Did he ever get any big-time hits back on the playground in kickball? Because he, he, he tends to brag from time to time. I'm pretty sure you probably bested him on that kickball uh, black top that you played on back in the day. You know what's so funny is, is that we both were, are so competitive. And back in the day, I mean, he, he would, it would be basically Sherrard's team against Vicky's team, and we'd go at it. And, um, I mean, it was, it was, there were always rip snorters. I mean, we'd go at it. He's, he's competitive, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here, because I love that. I know that he wants to win, and he wants, he's going to do everything in his power to help us in our program. And so, how you know, you can't work for someone better than that. Coach Hall is somebody that's been the voice of the Sycamore women's basketball program the past two years. Extremely excited to begin this journey with you. Thanks so much for the time, and we look forward to many exciting days down the road. Thank you very much. Once again, that was Coach Vicki Hall. For more on Coach Hall, she continues to build that staff, build this team. We'll have plenty of updates on the Indiana State women's basketball program right here on GoSycamores.com.